Eliza Gladys Milvina Dean, the 2nd of February 1912 to the 31st of May 2009, was a British civil servant, cartographer, and the last survivor of the sinking of the RMS Titanic on the 15th of April 1912. At two months old, she was also the youngest passenger aboard. Dean was born in Branscombe, England, on the 2nd of February 1912 to Bertram Frank Dean, 1886-1912, and Georgette Eva Light, 1879-1975. She had an older brother, Bertram Veer Dean, born 21 May 1910. She never married and had no children. Her father died on the Titanic, her mother died on 16 September 1975, aged 96, and her brother died on 14 April 1992, age 81, the 80th anniversary of the iceberg collision. Dean's parents decided to leave the United Kingdom and emigrate to the United States, they were planning to move to Wichita, Kansas, where her father had relatives, and his cousin owned a tobacco shop that he was going to co-own. They were not supposed to be aboard the Titanic, but due to a coal strike, they were transferred onto it and boarded it as third-class passengers at Southampton, England. Dean was barely two months old when she boarded the ship. Her father felt its collision with the iceberg on the night of the 14th of April 1912, and after investigating, returned to his cabin, telling his wife to dress the children and go up on deck. Dean, her mother, and her brother were placed in lifeboat 10. Her father did not survive, and his body, if recovered, was never identified. As was the case with many of Titanic's immigrant widows, Etta Dean surrendered any notion of remaining in the United States once it was clear her husband had not been saved. In the 2000 PBS documentary Lost Liners, in giving her account of the disaster, Milvina described the state her mother was in during the aftermath of the disaster. We stayed in a hospital for two or three weeks for my mother to recover a little bit, and then we came back to England, because we had nothing, we had no clothes, we had no money and of course she was so brokenhearted, she just wanted to get home. The White Star Line offered Etta and her children passage back to England aboard RMS Adriatic. While aboard the ship, Dean attracted considerable attention. An article in the Daily Mirror dated 12 May 1912 described the ordeal. She was the pet of the liner during the voyage, and so keen was the rivalry between women to nurse this lovable might of humanity that one of the officers decreed that first and second class passengers might hold her in turn for no more than 10 minutes. It was not until Dean was in her 70s that she became involved in Titanic-related events. Over the years, she participated in numerous conventions, exhibitions, documentaries, radio and television interviews, and personal correspondence. In 1997, Milvina sailed to New York, along with several members of the Titanic Historical Society, aboard the Queen Elizabeth II, QE2. After a few days in New York, Milvina traveled to Kansas City, and visited the house that her uncle owned, and to where her family was going to settle. Several of her uncle's descendants met Milvina for the first time. In 1998, she traveled to the United States to participate in a Titanic convention in Springfield, Massachusetts, and another in 1999 in Montreal, Quebec. She had also been scheduled to appear at a commemoration of the 94th anniversary of the sinking in 2006, but a broken hip prevented her appearance. She also appeared in the history special Titanic's final moments, missing pieces. Dean staunchly refused to see James Cameron's film Titanic, 1997. She recalled having nightmares after seeing A Night to Remember, 1958, the film based on Walter Lord's book, and did not wish to imagine her father as one of the people in the crowd of passengers stranded on the sinking liner. She declined invitations to the premieres of Titanic and Ghosts of the Abyss, 2003. In December 2007, 
She also criticized the BBC and its television program Doctor Who for including an episode with a Starship cruise liner called the Titanic which was similar in appearance to the historical liner. Speaking from her nursing home, she said, the Titanic was a tragedy which tore so many families apart. I lost my father and he lies on that wreck. I think it is disrespectful to make entertainment of such a tragedy. A spokeswoman for the show said, no offense was intended. Voyage of the Damned is set on a spaceship called the Titanic and not a boat. In April 2008, Dean had accepted an invitation to speak in Southampton at an event commemorating the 96th anniversary of the sinking, but ill health resulting from a respiratory infection forced her to cancel. In December 2008, at age 96, Dean was forced to sell several of her family's possessions to pay for her private medical care following a broken hip. These included a letter sent to her mother from the Titanic Relief Fund, and a suitcase given to her and her mother in New York following the sinking. Their sale raised approximately £32,000. In February 2009, she announced that she would be selling several more items to pay for her increasing medical costs which she said exceeded £3,000 a month. Dean died of pneumonia on the morning of 31 May 2009, 97 years and 7 weeks after the Titanic sailed at a care home in Ashurst, Hampshire. She was cremated, and on 24 October 2009, her ashes were scattered from a launch at the docks in Southampton where the Titanic set sail. Since October 2007, Dean had been the last Titanic survivor, following the death of Barbara West Dainton, who died aged 96 in England. In response to the escalating cost of Dean's healthcare, the Milvina Fund was set up in April 2009 by the Belfast, British, and International Titanic Societies with the exclusive aim of taking care of her nursing home bills. It was given a boost by the Irish author and campaigning journalist Don Mullen at the opening of his worldwide Nokia photographic exhibition, A Thousand Reasons for Living, featuring a portrait of Dean, in Dublin on of April 2009. Mullen introduced an additional portrait of Dean's hands, as she signed a card for a Titanic autograph collector, which he produced as a limited edition of 100 copies. He made the edition available at 500 euros each and then challenged the director and stars of the film Titanic, 1997, James Cameron, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Kate Winslet, singer Celine Dion, and the corporation Sony Music, 20th Century Fox and Paramount Pictures to match him euro for euro to support her with her bills. DiCaprio and Winslet led the way with a joint contribution of 20,000 US dollars. Cameron and Dion donated 10,000 US dollars each. Thank you for listening, and if you would like to hear more biographies, please leave a comment below and perhaps give a thumbs up and subscribe to help my channel. Thank you again for listening.